of finding yourself living a busy life, a rushed life, a hectic life, a life where you're trying to get somewhere. Well, me too. We all get caught up in this trying to get to financial goals, career goals, health goals, healing related, relationship, ping the bill goal. <laughs> you know, we're all rushing to get somewhere. And it doesn't help with our technology getting faster. Everything is moving quicker from our phones and devices. In this video, I want to speak about what do we lose out on in this way of living and the wisdom of slowing down. As a registered psychologist and mindfulness teacher who completed a six-month retreat in silence, many people anticipate that most of the day I'm moving super slow and easeful I float in the day. <laughs> wow. That's not exactly it. I'm like everyone, get caught up in this fast move paced life. But what helps to keep centering me helping me downshift this high paced gear, this high gear that we all get caught in, is really the practice of mindfulness and mindfulness meditation. And mindfulness has helped me in spilling all the learnings that come up from the chair or cushion or however you meditate, has helped me bring things to life. And I wanna share with you a story where that slowing down really it was just beautiful. And what had happened was a couple of days ago, I went on a hike that I've been wanting to do uh, for a couple of months, especially since I injured my Achilles heel. And I was really curious, um, what kind of time would I be able to get to the top of this mountain now that my Achilles heel has healed? And this mountain itself is about a kilometer in elevation gain, so it's kind of steep up. And this is over three and a half kilometers. So what is that in miles? A 0.6 elevation gain and a 2.7, I think, something like that, uh, distance. So it's steep, relatively steep. And so one of the things that I've intentionally, continually brought to things that I enjoy is being present which means really focusing, paying attention, observing the space I'm in, taking it in, the trees that I miss that I haven't seen, the formation of the rocks, the smell, and even the people as I'm passing or people that are passing me, all these moments of living. So I was really enjoying it while I was curious, kind of my eye was on the clock, how fast am I gonna make it? And I had a time that I was hoping to make it to. So here I am going up and I see this lady and taking her time. There's a section that had steps and my estimation was she was in her early 70s and she was really like consciously going up and I can see it wasn't really easy. And I couldn't help but start a conversation. I was so inspired by her. And I just it was just started asking her, so how is the hike going? You're doing amazing. And uh, she said, actually, today was a day she wasn't sure she would ever do this hike again. And she thanked me for stopping and having conversation with her. And she shared with me how she sat in her car before driving to this hike, wondering if this was her 10th year since she started doing this hike and wasn't sure if she wanted to continue or she, she wouldn't be able to. And she just gave herself a chance to do that. And she thanked me, she said, oh, you're inspiring me now to keep going. And I thought, are you kidding me? You're inspiring me. It was such a beautiful connection. She started telling me about her meditation practice, her sense of living and purpose, her path and spiritual path it was, after I left her, and we stayed for about 10, 12 minutes, I stayed on the hike with her, it was so enriching. It was the highlight of my hike. So by the time I made it to the top, my time was about 10, 12 minutes slower than I anticipated. And so what? I didn't meet my, like, my maximum time. 
I had the most enriching conversation. She, she was like a ray of sunshine. She truly brightened my day. And it made me think of this metaphor about the mountain and connection. So here's a couple of lessons that I really got from this, is just even in the process of slowing down, I regulated my heart rate, I was able to breathe better, I was able to catch my breath, and that made me think of the metaphor in life. Are we giving ourselves these moments, these pockets of time where we can catch our breath, we can regulate our heart, not just heartbeat, but our emotional heart, something that helps us downshift. It could be meditation, it could be resting, something that helps us connect and slow down. It just made me see the importance of that. And not just about chasing whatever our goal is, whatever our big goal, career, or work, or finances, whatever it is, health. It's not just this chasing. Because I thought about how much time did I really spend at the top of a mountain? I just spent, I don't know, a couple of minutes stretching, enjoying the view, which was quite stunning. And then what? Then I went down. But the longest portion of the journey was actually going up and down. That's the longest portion, not just being at the top. So if we over-focus on just getting to the top, we miss out on enjoying really all the connections that may form, the beautiful connections with other beings that we miss out on. And that can be so nurturing. Now, does this mean we have to slow down everything all the time? Of course, that's not realistic. I mean, if you're trying to get to catch a, you're trying to catch a plane <laughs> and you, the plane is about to leave, you're not gonna just walk slowly to the gate. If you're able to run and you need to run, then you're gonna run to the gate, catch the plane. So it's more about regulating from this high gear we're on, knowing when, okay, now I'm gonna downshift. Now it's rest time. Now it's meditation time. Now it's exercise time. All the things that can rest and refuel us. That's really something that this highlighted for me. Another lesson that this provided me is what we do in mindfulness meditation is we're training the mind with attention and focus. And at times we narrow attention, we zoom in, and at times we expand this developing flexibility of attention. And it was such a gift that the practice kicked in for me on the hike. Because if I was just, just zoomed in, just zoomed in, don't care about talking to anyone, I just gotta get to the top, I would miss out on the bigger picture, the zooming out, the taking in this beautiful place in nature, the actually appreciating my body for being able to do this hike. Because I couldn't do that a couple of months ago. And who knows, sometime in the future, I may not be able to do this. So this widening the lens, it really helps us get a whole some perspective or the journey we are on. So my wish really for everyone, including me, is to keep catching these moments when we go in high gear. And we're gonna need that, all of us. Yet yeah, there's times to go in high gear, but there's also as important times to put it down in lower gear. And we need those pockets of time in the day, in each day, in each week, that we can rest, recharge, reflect, reorient, catch our breath, and enjoy this journey we're on and not just wait to get to the somewhere. I hope you found this useful. If you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and may your moments be filled with ease and may you be present with as many of them.